Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 7. So this tutorial is going to be all about the gun, how we can animate it, how we can add a muzzle flash as well as how we can have a little dot on the screen to look where the gun is pointing and that's going to be called UI. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and with that in mind, let's get to work. So let's take a look firstly at UI. So if we go to game object, go down here to UI and click on something really simple like raw image. It will give you here in the hierarchy something called canvas and something called event system. The event system isn't too important right now, however the canvas is. So the canvas, if we double click it, will give you what looks like a white outline. Now this is representative of your screen. So everything you see here in the scene view is what is inside here. And you can see this little white dot here is the raw image we've just added. It isn't within this uh, canvas right here, so therefore if we press play, we wouldn't actually see it. See? However, if we move it into the screen, let's say to there, we would see it. So that's how the canvas works. And you can see no matter where I look, that UI element always stays exactly in the same place. And we can use that to our advantage. For example, if we were to anchor it here, dead center. So we clicked here basically, and this can either set it up here, up here, up here, down here, and this represents different portions of the screen. And you'll notice as you click it, this little thing changes right there, and that dictates the center position. So if we have the center position set dead center of our screen, and then zero out the X and the Y, then this raw image will be right in the center of our screen. And if we change the width to, let's say, uh, three by three, it will appear like a little dot in the middle of the screen, indicating this is exactly where we're looking. And that's quite a good indication of how we can then bring in the gun to see exactly where we're aiming. So on that note, let's bring in that gun and let's make it, well, animate. So if we go to our gun that is actually in our first person controller, and if you remember, we actually have it set as inactive, we can click on this little button right here, set it back active, double click to zoom in and now we're going to animate this to give it the impression that it's actually firing something. So although we've dealt a little bit with UI right there, we've just put that little dot in there, we will come back to UI, rest assured we're going to deal a lot with UI eventually because we'll have things like our stats on screen, you know, like our ammo, health, whatever. So we're going to do a lot more in UI. This is just a very brief introduction to show you what we can do with it and how it is useful for us. So. What do we do here? Well, the handgun itself needs to be animated because we've done it just like the uh, door. That needs to be animated because it needs to open and close. So obviously, we need to do the same with a gun. Now, you can take as much time as you need for this animation. There's no set way of doing it, but I'm basically going to make it kind of recoil just a little bit when we fire. So to do that, I'm going to go to animation, click on create, and I'll just call this handgun fire. And yeah, we've dealt with animation, so I'm not going to go through it all over again, but just make sure you press that record button and set the first keyframe of zero. So we're going to be dealing mostly with uh, sorry, position and rotation here. So we need to set everything as they are now. So let's set the position, retype 0 0.272, easy. And let's also set the Y position minus 0 0.564. Uh, probably not going to deal with, in fact, I probably will deal with Z because why not? 1.163. And we can see just how this all works if I do use the Z axis. Rotation, let's set it to 1 and back to 0 just so we set that keyframe. Same with Y, set as minus 8. And same with zero, uh, Sorry, Z, set to 1 and then set back to 0 so we set that keyframe down here. So this is going to be a pretty quick animation because the idea of firing a gun is it, you know, it's really quick. It's just boom. So we need to do it in a small amount of frames. So we're going to go to frame four first off. Hit return. Right there. So the recoil is going to be done on the X rotation. So we need to rotate upwards. So you can see I've slowly rotated to minus 6.51, but I'm going to round that up to minus seven. I may do it up a little bit more. But at the same time, 
I'm actually going to decrease the height of this gun. So for reference, I'm going to copy whatever figure is inside my um, Y position right here. So yeah, that's fine. So we'll take that. And I'm actually going to bring it down just a little bit. And that is that keyframe set. So I'm then going to go to keyframe 10, hit return, and reset it back to how it should be. So I'm going to paste that value back in Y position up here and rotation back to zero. And that's basically the animation done. Now we can refine this a little bit more. A good example would be to have back on the keyframe four, we can just click here. We could actually move the gun back ever so slightly. So then by the time we come here, we've brought it back into position. So if I stop the animation now, go back to my project window and it has saved, so it's there. If I press play now, we're gonna see that animation loop continuously. So you can see exactly what's happening. Now, what I think we probably should do is actually turn off the animator, press play. And I do believe that rather than have uh, how the gun looks right now, because if we turn the animator on, it kind of shifts a little bit. So we need to stop that actually happening. So if we press play and make note of the, it's gonna be the X, isn't it? So 0 0.272 is currently what the X is. And this is a good lesson in how we can modify animation. So 0 0.272, however, press, and it changes to a different place. So that means that if we go back to animation, click on our keyframe right there. Sorry, press record first, click on our first keyframe. I point 0 0.072. So this is a good way of showing how we can change that. Let's take out that second zero right there. So it goes back to 272. And let's go to the 10th keyframe and 0 0.272. So we've changed that animation in each keyframe. And if we press the effect, I've just noticed there, as we go from the first to the 10th, it changes ever so slightly on the Z. So we need to retype the Z. So it should be 1.163. 0.163. And now, so the first and last keyframe should match completely, and they do. So let's press the record button to stop. And if we press play again with the animator actually ticked, we should be able to see that animation changed. Obviously, tick the animation. <laughs> so our gun has decided to go a little bit crazy. Do you guys know why? Hopefully, you do. The reason being, is this keyframe. So we press record again and we go to keyframe four. We can see the guns move that way. Do you know what to do guys? You should do. So if we go back to keyframe four right there. That should be 0 0.272. So those keyframes are now set. And if we press tick on the animator and oops, I've clicked off it there and press play. Retick animator. And there we go. Although it looks a little bit crazy, the gun looks like it's doing something it really shouldn't be. Uh, we can obviously control that just like we do with the door. So let's get that into practice then. So the handgun, let's tick animator. So we have got it ticked now, it is ready to apply. And the way we do this, remember if we go to the uh, controller for the door right here, we have this new state. And the same principle applies for the handgun. So if we go into the handgun animator here, so we're on the controller, we just need to right click, create state, empty. And that's our new state. And just like we have done last time, set as default. So we have this handgun animation there that we can use. However, by default, we're going to have this new state open, which means just like the door, if we press play, no animation will occur. So next we have to take that handgun fire animation and untick loop time because we don't want that to happen. And this is something that we'll deal with in the next tutorial anyway, because we'll have the mechanics going. But the last thing I want to add to this scene right now is a muzzle flash. Muzzle flash is a fantastic thing because it just adds that little effect, little something extra to the game. So I'm gonna to go to my textures folder and I'm gonna drag and drop this texture, which you can get on the website, 
head over there, downloads and assets, uh, Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone, and you can download it under tutorial number seven. So how are we going to add a muzzle flash to this gun? Easy. Best way to do it is if we go on the handgun itself, right click and 3D object, and then add in a plane. So it's going to look pretty small right now. However, if we drag and drop this texture onto plane right there, and then over here in the inspector panel, where we have the material, we can change the shader from standard to something which will actually get rid of the black around it to actually give it the impression of it is a flame. And we can go to particles and we can actually select additive. And we can see right there, it's changed it to a flame shape. So how do we get this to look more like a muzzle flash? Well, just need to rotate. So if we rotate on the X and then rotate on the, should we do the Y? So we'll do the Y to probably minus 180 and X to minus 90. So we can use that to appear as though a flame or flash is coming out of the gun. How about there? Now it's up to you how you want to do this. You can obviously take way more time to do this than I have. It's you know, entirely up to you what you want to do. But I would recommend playing around with things. For example, you could have it one way uh, that I have it. You could have it a completely different way. Like, for example, if I just rotate that by 90, I have it that way up. And I guess that's pretty cool. So I might have it like that. So you can see that's how the flash is going to look at the time. Now, another thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to uh, add in another light and I'm going to add in a point light and this point light is going to be representative of the flash that we see as well however the range itself is going to be rather small so I'm going to have this as two but I'm going to have the intensity as three and I'm going to change the color to something relative to this particular texture so I'm going to click the little pipette tool right there and then I'm going to bring it over here to this kind of orangey color here and click. So this light now is relatively the same color as this. And if we press play and get close to a wall, we can see that kind of effect that it's gonna have when we fire. So if you could imagine that we're here and we're firing our gun all of a sudden, there you go. So that is the kind of thing that we're going to code in the next tutorial. We're going to code the ability to actually do that. So the last thing I'm going to do is just quickly right click and rename and have it as muzzle flash. Remember, you can get all these textures on the website. Head over there, downloads and assets. So you can see how this is coming together quite nicely now, this game. And I think from the next tutorial onwards, it's really going to expand because as I said, the next tutorial, we're going to code the mechanics for the gun to fire it. So we're going to add in a sound effect as well. And we're also going to start building up the rest of this world that we have going on because it's relatively small right now. And by the time, you know, we get into the double digit tutorials, we're actually going to have something to do. So. What I would recommend to you guys now is take your time with your animation on the gun, add in your muzzle flash, and work a little bit with the UI if you want. Maybe you can have a cross in the middle of your scene to dictate your cursor, or just a dot like what I've got. It's entirely up to you. So, guys, until the next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.